I am completely operational, and all my circuits are functioning perfectly. Why would you suspect otherwise? Two months ago, I set out on a treacherous voyage to try and beat the Wings of Liberty campaign with only SCVs. While I technically failed that challenge due to one mission, I did prove it was entirely possible. Now I'm here to attempt the same thing for Heart of a Swarm. In Davy Firearms Comic Antics, I ask and answer a question none of you probably ever thought to yourselves. Can you beat StarCraft II Heart of a Swarm with only drones? Now firstly, you may be thinking to yourself, wait a minute, this has already been done before, and it's uploaded here on YouTube. Well, yeah, you're right. However, when I did address this in my first video, a fair amount of people did say that they were interested in seeing my take on the challenge. So here I am, doing the thing. The rules are essentially going to be the same as my SCV playthrough, but with the rules slightly adjusted for the Zerg. I can make drones and overlords, but nothing else. Any passes or abilities that give me units are good to go, as well as any units I find on the map. I can construct any and all buildings that are available to me, and the difficulty will be set on Brutal the entire run. With all that said and done, let us begin. Well, let me tell you what, boyo, I started off my campaign with a bang. And by started with a bang, I mean I already failed. No matter what you attempt to do, Valerian will keep you in the cell for all eternity until you make at least six Zerglings, which kind of invalidates the run. Now I'm not going to end it here. You and I are both intellectuals in the fact that we both passed first grade problem solving, and you see the timestamp of the video. You know that's not the case. So what I'm going to do is make the six Zerglings required and send them into their imminent demise. They don't contribute towards my completion of the game whatsoever, other than completing this one objective. That being said, that actually really fucked me over. The Zerglings in their mad dash to commit suicide started aggroing a lot of the defense bots and turrets to get into position. However, you can't begrudgingly hold on to mistakes you made in the past. You can't change the past, and the only way for you to ever atone for your transgressions is for you to move forward. Ignore the fact that this game has a save system. That would invalidate my out-of-place life lesson I just left there. I did some sick drone splits that even Sarah would be jealous of, and tried to kill the Eradicator, but failed. It really did live up to its name. I'm going to invalidate that life lesson even further by stating that I wanted an old save so my drones would stay alive to free the Zerglings, which was just enough to destroy the Eradicator, beating the mission. The next mission suffers from the unfortunate fate of not having any drones in it, so we're going to skip over it. If you want me to give you a plot rundown for StarCraft 2, feel free to comment below what your favorite ice cream flavor is, because I'm not doing it. I was always a fan of cookies and cream myself, honestly. Oh wait, fuck, speaking of comments, ding ding ding, motherfucker. Did you know that only... X percent of you are subscribed? Go ahead and subscribe. I guess. Here's a Twitch and Discord, have fun. Up next is Rendezvous, where we have to hold up for a few minutes, while Zerg Queen tunnels reinforcements towards our position. This mission will unlock both Spine and Spore Crawlers, which are the only defensive structure we'll get for the rest of the run. Defending wasn't too difficult, but it was actually kind of problematic trying to complete the main objective, which is destroying the Pulse Cannon. I know with enough strategy and micro, you can destroy the space in a Blitzkrieg Assault. However, I went for the stealth approach. Kerrigan very stealthily murdered civilians, got behind the Pulse Cannon, destroyed it, and beat the mission. Just like every other run, I'm going to start Kaldir, because having the Kerrigan upgrade is always beneficial before going to Char. The first mission is simple enough. I use Spine and Spore Crawlers to defend my base, while taking full advantage of the Flash Freeze. However, this is where the first problem I'm going to encounter with this run is. Creep Tumors. It's not too uncommon to start a mission without a Queen, but luckily it's fairly regular to start with anywhere from 1 to 2 Creep Tumors in your main starting location. This makes Creep Tumors incredibly delicate in this playthrough, because if I lose that one creep tumor, I can't spread creep anymore for the rest of that mission. However, this is offset in the future with the introduction of malignant creep, which I'll be utilizing heavily in the later parts of this playthrough. The next mission is another defense mission, where you have to destroy all the Protoss shuttles before they reach Shakuris. The main strategy we'll be using, just like every other defense mission, is going to be utilizing our spine and spore crawlers to kill all the offensive forces sent after the objective. Luckily, spreading creep wasn't too bad, since all the main objectives are fairly close in proximity. Also, the more I play through these challenges, the more I realize the enemy AI has the spatial awareness of a brain-dead snail. They're the true masters of the Sun Tzu war tactic of Peekaboo. 
If it's not directly in front of them, or directly killing them, it doesn't exist. Getting closer to the end of the mission, Kerrigan was petrified when they were informed that the Protoss was using Mothership technology to cloak the surrounding forces heading towards the Conduit. However, I think she kind of forgot about the fact our main anti-air defenses could detect the cloaked units. Don't bully her though, I know exactly what it's like to be anxious over shit that has no correlation. Recently I jumped out of my chair in an anxious flurry to get my sausage links out of the oven, only to remember I didn't turn on the oven, or have sausage links, or would cook sausage links in an oven to begin with. After that, we get access to our first evolution mission, in which the real challenge in this playthrough was going to begin. Zerg evolutions are essentially the developers putting absurdly overpowered units into their game for fun, which is fantastic and really fits with the lore. However, there's a problem with that. One of the potential evolution paths for my Zerglings are Swarmlings, which have the ability to be morphed instantly and spawn in larger groups. The problem is, to unlock that, I have to make Swarmlings. I don't even have the option for drones. And as revenge for Kerrigan's racism towards supply depots, the Terrans have now developed a prejudice towards spawning pools. So guess what? I don't get to evolve. Ever. Since I need to evolve Zerglings to evolve anything else. Isn't that great? I would have been really upset if I was able to participate in one of the key features in this expansion. Glad to hear that isn't the case. Neadra killed some Protoss. Not a whole lot to talk about here. And then we move on to Zerus. Zergling Reconstitution and Improved Overlords were now available which I'll swap around fairly often. Zergling Reconstitution is great if I need a meat shield for Kerrigan to utilize, while Improved Overlords was overall better in missions where I slow push with crawlers. Up next is Waking the Ancient, where we luckily spawn close to a potential expansion and a queen. I'm not kidding, any mission in which we start off with a queen, my cold dead heart becomes a lukewarm dead heart for about 14 seconds. Aside from one hiccup, getting all the biomass was pretty easy, and Brack being the sexual deviant he is, charged head first into his imminent death through dozens of impaling spikes piercing his flesh until he explodes. Man, I wish that was me. Now it was time for Kerrigan to turn into a majestic butterfly, and needed her vicious drone swarm to protect her while she AFKs for about 25 minutes. Luckily, we do have access to a golden base to the right, and a defendable position... in theory. I don't really know why, but they're one of the only AI in this entire playthrough that completely ignores my drones if they're close to the objective, which isn't really all that cool because I kinda need Kerrigan to beat the game. I had to reload a few times to get some better locust timings and successful wall-offs, but the drones were overall successful in their Grand Crusade to protect their queen. In our next mission, Kerrigan shows off her power to me, and only me, because there's nothing to talk about here and I'm not going to stretch this video out for ad revenue. I'm not a lore channel, and I don't know if you've commented your favorite ice cream flavor yet, but if you want some more inspiration, I also really love birthday cake. Now we're finally forced to go back to Char to retake our home planet. With our fourth tier unlocked, we gain access to Wild Mutation, which with Zergling Reconstitution gives us a very reliable and efficient meat shield to protect Kerrigan. This mission was actually way too easy with our upgrades that I actually really felt pitiful for Zagara and decided to let her win just so she could have the slightest boost of self-esteem. That was, until she busted out the shitty quote from her StarCraft fanfiction, and my pity turned into aggressive bloodlust, and I decimated her hopes and dreams in not even two minutes. I unlocked my fifth tier of abilities, which conveniently enough gave me malignant creep, which trivialized a Gorgon mission, since, you know, the entire objective is to spread creep. Before we reclaim Charmander, we have to destroy the Terran Fortress, which proved to be much less challenging and more so incredibly annoying. Getting to the Tactical Operations Center is simple enough, but since Warfield is constantly deploying forces and nukes towards our structures, what would normally be a slow and steady push turned into an annoying slog of Michaeling spine crawlers with very little room for error. I'd reload a fair amount of times, but eventually was able to start spreading creep to the primary objective, was able to destroy it by rooting my crawlers near the objective, to slowly tear away its hole until its imminent destruction. I decided to do the Dominion Space storyline before Sky Gear but won't be covering it since they're both hero missions, hence no drones, hence not a lot to cover. Our crew was big, but it needed to get bigger. We needed to pick up Stukov because he's a literal Zerg Russian. On the next mission we don't start with any queens, but we do start with infestors, which can be used to infest garrisons that spawn an immense amount of free units, and also come bundled with a free creep tumor. It was very important for that reason, that we kept at least one infester alive to retake our biophages, in case of their destruction. 
Protecting them with spine and spore crawlers are also very beneficial, so I don't have to constantly move my infestors back and forth or taking any lost biophages. Realistically, this mission would have been a lot easier if I didn't send in my starting infestors to imminent death so many times. Having battle cruisers and siege tanks would have made this infinitely easier, but if there's something these challenge runs have taught me well, it's that my preservation skills are about on par with PETA's, and in the end had to put my infester in spine crawler jail just so I couldn't lose it. Over time I started pushing further and further into the defenses, and with all the virophages retaken, the Terran had a chance of survival miraculously less than zero. Pushing into the lab entrance, we have to destroy all the hybrid in the facility, or Carrion dies instantaneously. Spinecrawler pushes wouldn't be too efficient on this mission, since there's so much ground you need to cover with only one creep tumor at your disposal, so I went with twin drones instead. I also gave Kerrigan Mend, since there's a lot of splash damage against my drones, and the two Brutalisks unlocked throughout the mission can clear through the early segments with little micro. Everything went great until the Dominion arrived at the final hybrid cell. However, they started killing the hybrid for me, while me and my drones burrowed in the corner and watched them engage in mortal combat. It was a lot more intense than it had any right to be. I wouldn't really have lost if they failed in their Grand Crusade, but I was so invested in their endeavor that I audibly cheered when they won. Godspeed, you glorious bastards. There's a special place in Valhalla for you. In Kerrigan's... God, I, I don't know anime. Hunter x Hunter arc? Yeah, I'll reroll with that. Kerrigan needed to shoot her laser stronger than Nerud's laser, and in order to do that, Stukov needed to deactivate some temples to help bear clean. We at the Gunface Twitter page stand a healthy laser. The recurring trend of starting with only one creep tumor shows up again, and is more painful than ever, because this mission has up to five positions we need to defend. We did a fairly good job of preserving the starting tumor, but ultimately lost it at the fourth temple. However, I had a plan. A terrible one, but a plan nonetheless. I built about 20,000 hatcheries outside of the final objective, with how the AI manages micro, put them in a location that they would hopefully attack when I started the objective. I didn't know if this would work, but it actually worked perfectly. While Stukov was making his final stand in the corner, Kerrigan's laser turned bigger than Nerud's laser, and we won. Until we find someone with a bigger laser. Then somebody with an even bigger laser. Then someone with the biggest laser. Shonen joke. It's time to finish the fight, so now we have to go to Core Hall, and along the way unlocked drop pods. I really wanted to see if the Zerglings I got from this would count for reconstitution, but they don't, sadly. Overall, I still think I prefer it more than the Leviathan for this challenge. Just like the last mission, we have to defend five different positions. We do also have the option to destroy some gates, but as far as I'm aware, it's an objective that has absolutely no use whatsoever. Spine and Spore Crawlers will be utilized to defend the bio launchers, while Kerrigan clears out four positions where the next biopods will enter the atmosphere. Defending the last launcher was a lot more difficult than the other ones, since they started deploying units from the bridge extending to their fortress. However, once the final launcher made planet fall, there was nothing stopping me and my drone legion from charging in recklessly and decimating the forward position. Up next in Death From Above, we get a real slice of diversity from the previous Terran missions, in which we, get this, have to push into a Terran fortification to destroy an objective. That's really crazy. I would have never thought something so controversial yet so brave would make it into its game. My strategy, on the other hand, might have been even more controversial. I'm going to push forward with spine and spore crawlers while I mess drones at home. Never before in Davy Gunface history has such drastic measures been taken in any of my playthroughs. Having access to both Dahaka and Kerrigan is a very good thing, though. Both of them have access to Mend, and in tandem with Malignant Creep, makes both of them essentially immortal. With our drone push forward with spine and spore crawlers, only the reckoning stands in our way. And if you want to see me beat this playthrough, follow my Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash davygunface. That's gonna do it- <sighs> Okay, I'm just shitting with you. In all seriousness though, I still need to record the final mission, because the first version of it went into the void, never to be seen again. So I'm kind of just looking at the script awkwardly trying to think of a clever segue. Do you know that the person who bought Segway Incorporated actually died the same year from falling off the cliff on a Segway? That's really sad. Anyway, Kerrigan began her assault on Emperor Menk's palace. In which a shocking turn of events, not even I could have predicted, occurred. I have to destroy the Terran fortification to destroy the main objective. That is unbelievable. This game is just twist after twist after twist after twist. Jokes aside though, I know that beating this mission with Crawler Spam would have been boring, so I decided to deviate from my bedroom set norm and decided to have an awesome climax here. I had a different, even worse strategy in mind. 
I discovered that if you plug the avenue in which your three commanders are entrenched, they actually just sit there and accumulate forces infinitely. The only exception is Raynor, in which you have to destroy a starport, or else he'll pull out some 48,000 APM medevac micro until eventually all of his forces get out of his base. With that noted, I pushed through all the entrenched positions, and when the time was right, let loose all of my allies, all of my drones, but I could even bring in the Sky Elephants to destroy the final objective of the campaign. With the Palace Gate destroyed, I can say with unwavering, wholehearted certainty that I didn't beat Heart of a Swarm with only drones. Fuck you, Valerian. If you like my content, and want to see more like it, feel free to subscribe to the channel. I upload every Wednesday, and I'm finally starting to stream on my Twitch and have a Discord server up and running. The link to both will be in the description, and I'd really love to see you there. Again, thank you so much for watching. It means a whole lot to me. And as always, stay frosty, my friends.